Hey guys, welcome to another Player.net review. Today we're going to be taking a look at the QPad 8K Pro Gaming Laser Mouse. Now, at the time of doing this video, I've actually already reviewed the product and kind of the review is live on the website. Um, and you can find all my in-depth testing. Um, no, seriously, like mouse testing is a serious, serious thing. Um, and you can find all of that on the website, but for today I just want to talk about the product and kind of QPad and what my thoughts are on mice and this particular product. Um, now obviously I can find sometimes buying a mouse a really hard thing because I feel that the ergonomics of a mouse completely define how nice that mouse is to use on a daily basis slash gaming basis. Um, you could have an incredible laser, but it means shit if you can't actually hold the mouse comfortably. Um, as a low sense player, I personally prefer a light, quick, claw style mouse. Um, it makes me feel not like grounded to the, the game. Um, but the Q pad something else. Um, the 8K is kind of this five finger grip ergonomic mouse, um, which I've got quite big hands. Um, and it still feels very, very much like my hand is grounded, even though. You know, I've got a bigger hand and it kind of slips over the edges. Now this is obviously a right-handed mouse, which is a bit of a... It's a bit unlucky for the left-handed people. Um, but for the sake of a mouse review, um, you know, if you're after something like that, there are plenty of ambidextrous and left-hand only mice. Um, although now probably I'm going to get a load of left-handed people come on this review and tell me I'm full of shit and there's nothing around. But there's quite a lot of mouses that you can adapt to. Um... For instance, a lot of the kind of Zoe and like the claw grip ones, I suppose you could use them as a left-handed person. Now, when I think of mice and buying mice, I don't really care about the laser like I've already said as a low sense player. I just care about a smooth experience. Obviously, this is 8K, uh, 8.2K CPI, um, which is like just stupid. Um, but some people might want that if they've got 15 screens that they need to quickly go across in order. But testing this mouse at like kind of the standard, um, the standard levels at which I expect everyone would kind of be using, um, you know, 800, 1600, 3200, the mouse performed excellently. I personally use 800, um, but you know, tracking was great. The performance, the sensor was great. Generally, performance-wise, this is one fucking crazy mouse. Um, Actually using the mouse on a day-to-day -day basis is where this also shines. It's just so comfortable. Um, I've used a lot of mice in the past, um, you know, like Razer Taipans. I was actually a bit of a Razer fan. I had a Death Adder. Um, I liked my Still Series mice, um, all the way back to the Akari. Um, and I've never used a mouse as comfortable as this. It's simply crazy. Um, obviously, this does all come at a premium of £70, which is a lot. I do have to admit. But if you're in the market for something that's a little comfortable, it's got a great sensor, and it's well designed, then the 8K is something that I just cannot fault. Um, I think the only thing that let it down was maybe the value. Um, it could have been cheaper. I don't like when they put a huge premium on mice because they've got these crazy sensors. Um, I'd rather they made 3.2K uh, kind of mice that performed excellently versus an 8.2k that performed excellently if it meant that it was cheaper you know if i could get these same ergonomics in a lower sense but again it is part of the mouse industry and it is the way it will be um everything bigger better etc so yeah the qpad 8k just shines for the fact that the the actual ergonomics are impeccable um it's not even a case that they're good they are impeccable um down to the the design of the um, the switches, strong, mechanical, just everything just works. And this is another point. With a well-designed mouse, the actual lifespan of the mouse is increased. Um, if you've ever seen mice where the kind of the buttons sit right next to each other and they feel cheap and tacky and then those actually eventually break, that's not going to happen with the 8K because they've actually just designed each button on its own little kind of this is my bit and this is your bit. There's no mixing up. It's just straight, no bullshit mice. 
The thing I really liked was the fact that most kind of mouse manufacturers, they're going cheesy, they're, they're embedding all this crap. It's like a fucking, the sniper button um, is one of my personal favorite ones. Um, and I can understand the need for these things, but I personally think they're a gimmick that adds a huge price tag. I like what Coupad had done with this mouse. It's simple, you know, there's nothing, it's a left click, right click, a DPI changer and a backwards forwards button. What more do you really need? Obviously some people might argue that this is let down in MMOs where you might need lots of buttons. For those people I say learn to use your keyboard better or perhaps buy a gamepad. Um, it's, it's little, I can't say much more than that. Now, this does walk away with a gold award. Um, and it has literally, um, you know, I've used a lot of mice, and this is the first where I've gotten it out of the box and been like, wow, this is an incredible, incredible product. You know, you just don't get that these days. Um, it's very rare, very, very rare. Um, and what can I say? I mean, QPad, they design some amazing products. Um, personally, I love their keyboards. I love their mice. I remember actually one of my first mechanical keyboards when I was really broke was a, an MK50 with cherry reds, I want to say. And like that keyboard, it it was just, it worked. Like, you know, it's just no bullshit engineering. And that's something I think that a lot of companies are scared to do these days. Um, for instance, uh, a lot of the kind of thermal take TTE sports products, they seem to be bundled with all this crazy, crazy stuff. Um, and even again, like the sniper button on the, I think it's the Corsair M65, and just silly stuff like that. I don't want it. I just want a mouse with backwards, forwards, right click, left click, scroll wheel, and that's it. Now, I'm not saying those things are bad, but I personally don't like them. So, the end question, would I buy the 8K? Yes, I would buy the 8K. Um, it's incredible, um, just because it is so comfy. I mean, I've literally never used such a comfy mouse, and now I'm rambling about how comfy a mouse is. Um, I'm sure you guys have heard Stranger Things, but it is incredibly nice to hold in the hand. Obviously, if you're a claw kind of gamer, and you, you hold your mouse like really aggressively, then this might not be the mouse for you. But if you're looking for something that you know you can use while you're at the office, um, or while you're working at home, a bit of browse on the internet, slow down the DPI, you know, it's a comfortable mouse to use, then you can switch it up and go crazy on the games. So, again, really understated product. It's so kind of sly with its simplistic looks that you'd never actually realise how good this mouse is to use. And I hope you enjoyed the review, because I'm going to wrap it up there before I keep rambling and saying how good the 8K is. Um, and obviously if you're also in the range for mouse mat, I did test the FX36 Pro Gaming mouse mat. Um, that's a nice mouse mat if you're a high sense player. Um, I'd also recommend the SteelSeries QCK or our in-house favorite, which is the OC UK XXXL um, desk mouse mat, um, which we have to use for testing because when you're testing mice, you have to really move them around quite a lot and it gets a bit scary at stages. Um, I would say that there was actually one thing off the top of my head now that I've said how, how good it is, um, which was the speed tests on the performance section of the mouse. Now this does come with like a 3.8 meters a second that apparently you can track at. I can't move my arm that fast, so I couldn't get it up that high. Um, but I'm going to keep retesting that and see if I can break my record. But the highest I could get it to track at 8.2 was like 2.8 meters or something, or 3 meters. Um, but a lot of the benchmarks were giving back some really odd readings. So I've kind of gone on real world performance for most of this review. Um, like the polling rate at one point was like 1,500, which is impossible. Um, so yeah, what can I say other than that? Buy the product and check out QPad and, oh, check out player.net. And yeah, just buy all the QPad mice that have 8k in their name anyway guys hope you enjoyed the review